Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming tonight. Um, we have got a lot of moving parts to this evening. We have uh, the ultimate, obviously, is for us uh, to pray and to intercede for our nation. And this is one of those things, if you know the Word of God, both Old and New Testament, that uh, prayer is one of those experiential attributes that we have with the Lord to interact with him in such a way. And it's also one of the least utilized opportunities. Prayer is something that actually is the true practice of, of getting ready uh, for heaven, to commune with him. Amen. And... Um, you know, if we have a concert, there'll be 10,000 people here. But if you call a prayer meeting, yeah, there'll be a handful. And um, that has historically always been true for the last 2,000 years. But uh, there are events taking place in our country, our community, and our world that I do believe that you're going to see a change in people being brought to the point of realizing, I must cry out to God to just be sustained, just to live. And um, so this is a night of, of um, you'll see why, but it's a night for us to get serious before the Lord, to intercede, to cry out to him. Many of you are gonna learn how to pray tonight, which is a great thing. Um, but... God has blessed us this evening in a way that he's taken this prayer meeting uh, beyond the walls of the church, which the church really doesn't have walls anyway, the real church. And there are churches joining us all across the United States tonight. There are churches who will be, uh, they're gonna be recording tonight and we've had churches tell us that they're gonna be playing it next week in their services. I just got word that there's some churches who canceled their Wednesday night service tonight to stream live our gathering together tonight. So we welcome all of you uh, here together in prayer this evening. And so um, it's just only now Wednesday and in the last... Um, 96 hours, our nation has been rocked by a series of events. And, well, let's put our eyes to the screens. Go. There you go, second floor. No, locked door. Where did they go in? First floor, first floor, first floor. Hold there, y'all. Somebody hold there. Hit that door. Rifle first. Rifle first. Blue, go. Go, 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 go. Go. Move. Move. I'm with you. Go left. Hold on. Straight, straight. Right here, right here, right here. It's locked. Go. Hit that stair. Hit the stairs. Go, go stairs, go stairs, go. Go, 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 Push it LPVO. Push it LPVO. Go right. Move, move. Watch out, watch out. 
Watch left, watch left. Suspect down, suspect down. Hey, hold the air. So that's how school started for Nashville, Tennessee, in the Franklin area at that church there as the kids were in school, Christian school, at their wonderful church that they attend. Um, our good friends, uh, Marty Getz and Jennifer, live in the area there. Um, the pastor's daughter, uh, one of the th uh, three children at the age of nine, was shot dead. When you heard the initial shots first, it was the three children being shot dead and then the three adults being shot dead. Um, and, you know, just so the Monday started that way, and. Um, this is something that is increasing in our nation and it is evident that we are starting to see profound indicators that we need God's mercy and grace in our country, <laughs> let alone to pray and to support our police officers. Um, this is not an issue of gun control. Uh, notice that it was guys with good guns that stopped a demoniac with a bad gun, okay? So this is an issue of the heart. This is an issue of the soul. This is only what Jesus can fix. There's no legislation that can fix this. You can't legislate morality. You can't create a new heart in somebody. Only Jesus Christ can do this. Our country's in need of God. And um, again, all of this is to prepare us for the gravity of this evening. Uh, the next thing is uh, what happened uh, in Mississippi. Uh, Look to the screens, please. It's unbelievable. It's hard to believe that this is not a Hollywood set. But this was a series of tornadoes on a scale that some are saying has not been experienced before. Remembering that God says to us, that he'll watch over any nation that puts him first by his grace. He'll shield us from such things. But when we leave off from the Lord, we leave ourselves vulnerable to what Satan would love to do to every single one of us. And next, you guys, is the weather reporter, a public television weather reporter. You guys have that? We got a new scan coming in here as we speak. Oh man, like north side of Amory, this is coming in. Oh man. <sighs> Dear Jesus, please help them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. We got a new scan coming in here as we speak. We just thought we'd repeat oh, this just man. so you got it right. Like north side of Amory, this is coming in. Oh man. He's saying that because that blue chunk Dear right Jesus, there, like that blue chunk is, is, is what okay. you do not want to see. And so on air, on broadcast, he calls out to Jesus. And uh, when he was in the midst of a catastrophe, he was questioned as to his uh, judgment on sh and should he have done such a thing. And uh, he refused to apologize uh, to, to praying for the Lord. And not only has the next issue been going on, now this normally we wouldn't include in a national day of prayer as we are today, but uh, many people have said, and it's been uh, uh, said w in love, that Israel is the f uh, 51st uh, state in America. Um, but Israel is literally at this hour and has been increasingly coming apart at the seams. Uh, there is a... Um, Antifa-led billion, billionaires have sponsored um, the anarchy that is on the streets of Israel right now. We'll show this video clip real quick because we're going to have time in prayer, including Israel. 
Israel spiraling out of control with inner turmoil. Violent protests erupting of Israelis on their own government. The unprecedented demonstrations reaching a breaking point. The rare uprising blocking roads and disrupting trains, clashing with police who fired stun grenades and water cannons. It's all happening as thousands of people across the country took to the streets on Wednesday during a nationwide day of disruption. For two months, Israel has been experiencing regular protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu's plan to reform the courts, which he says is necessary to curb what he calls activist judges. As Israel copes with its own internal unrest, it is also dealing with a wave of violence with the Palestinians uh, in the occupied uh, West Bank. Netanyahu calling for peace and saying people should not take the law into their own hands. The turmoil putting pressure on Israel's government across multiple fronts as the country braces for more violence. Matt Bradley, NBC News. So Israel is spiraling out of control because anarchists are demanding for uh, Netanyahu to step down because Netanyahu has now demanded as prime minister that the courts be reformed because they're so corrupt. Sound familiar? And so um, these are serious times. And so with us to give us a very brief commentary and prayer, uh, if all of our technology is working right tonight across the, uh, across the United States, um, a good friend, a warrior, a princess warrior, lo loves this nation, loves Jesus most, but um, I've asked Michelle Bachman, uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, to speak on socialism. And uh, Michelle, are you, are you with us? Michelle. I am, Pastor Jack. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's all yours. Thank you. God bless you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what a wonderful time to gather together. Pastor Jack asked me to speak just a minute or two on socialism and then also pray. It is really the issue of our time. We have an ideology that formed the basis of the United States and our overriding narrative and our reason for being was based upon godly principles of government. I'm the dean of a graduate school of government. We know from our primary source documents that our founders intended this nation to reflect godly values. What's happening right now is a complete switch in ideology. We're seeing a refutation of freedom and instead what's being put into place is socialism. And what does that mean? I wrote down a brief definition of socialism. Socialism is theft by government. It's government stealing from its own people. Individuals work, they make money, and the government takes whatever money, amount of money they want, or any goods that we create, or any services that we create, to use or give away however they choose. What is the practical effect of socialism is that individuals lose control over their lives and government gains control over individuals. All we have to do is look at the living laboratory of the last 100 years. Where have we seen socialism? Many countries, we've seen it in, uh, we've seen it in Russia, we've seen it in China, we've seen it in Venezuela, we've seen it in Cuba, we've seen it in many, many nations as well as African nations and other nations, we've seen socialism. And what social, the fruit of socialism has been misery and poverty. The, the, the worst fruit has been death by government. Mm. There's a great book by a man named R.J. Rummel called Death by Government. Wow. And he and others, a book called The Black Book of Communism documents that governments become brutal when they take authority and control over individuals. Well over 100 million people were murdered by their own governments in the last 100 years. This is unprecedented in all of human history. And that's why I ask you to join me now in prayer. Oh, Father, you have given us our inheritance in the United States. One of the greatest inheritance of any people group ever in history in this country where we were able to enjoy the benefits of liberty and all that went with it. But liberty, not just as license, liberty under the freedom of your principles, a godly framework of government. 
Oh, Father, we ask for forgiveness yes. and confession of sin yes. for not following your ways. For instead, Father, making everything else God in our country except for you. So we repent of violating the first commandment because there is only one God and it is you. Government isn't God. Nothing else is God. Materialism isn't God. And so we confess that sin. Lord, we pray, we cry out to you. Yes. We ask you, oh, Holy Father, for deliverance from the socialism that has come into the United States by the lawlessness that has come into our nation by our own government. Yes, God. And we ask that you would deliver us from this lawless, socialistic government that is bringing a system we no longer recognize. So Father, we recognize that this isn't just a matter of voting anymore. Right. This is a spiritual battle. Yes. And yes. so we cry out to our God yes, to deliver us in this moment. And we thank you, oh God, that our times are in, are in your hands and we trust you, Father, yes. in all things. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Amen. God bless you, Michelle. Thank you so much. She's so right about that. You think whenever a government has controlled the people, the people never got better. Go search your books. Go search history. When a government is in control, there's always a king or what is viewed as a divine right of kings, and there are the peasants. And America, because we don't know our history, as Michelle pointed out, our young people today are embracing what is being told to them regarding a socialistic agenda that the government knows best. And in many ways, you already know that there are times when even our children, or perhaps you, have been schooled by those who are in charge of how they know better about your life. They know better about how you should spend your money. They know better as to how you should spend your time. And this is sweeping our land. And again, over and over again tonight, as you hear from these people that will lead us in prayer, is that this is all the fallout from a nation turning its back on God. And you're gonna hear that over and over again tonight. Well, listen, um, in, in military, in the US military, there's what is termed as a, a battle buddy. <laughs> it almost sounds like an action figure. <laughs> but I, I have one of those in my life, and you only need one. And he's a brother that is no stranger to you. I will give my life for this man because I know he'd give his life for mine. And I love him with all of my heart. If anybody's got his pulse on the spiritual direction of this nation, it's my brother Tony Perkins. And Tony, uh, welcome tonight. And uh, we're all here. We got a full house, Tony. We love you. And uh, please speak to us. Well, thank you, Pastor Jack, and, and thank you for taking the lead to call the nation to prayer at a time like this. I was up on Capitol Hill earlier this evening, uh, met with several members of Congress, actually spoke to the member of Congress who represents uh, Nashville, and just talking with a number of those members who understand we're at a point where there's no, as you mentioned earlier, there's no legislation that'll solve this, and they said that themselves, and they've been mocked for saying that. They've been ridiculed for saying that America needs to return to God. We cannot continue to see this type of devastation, these types of tragedy over and over and continue to have the same response. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just need more laws. That, that's not it. We have rejected the God who gave us the freedom and this country and established us as, we, as he has. And as you pointed out, scripture is very clear on this. When you look at Israel, when they rejected God's statutes, when they rejected his word, his law, he finally said after a certain period of time, all right, guys, it's over. Right. And you know, I was thinking about this, and, and today it was very interesting that you've asked me to pray for 
both government and military. Military leaders, our top military leaders were on Capitol Hill today. You know what they were defending? They were defending the military's new policy that will fly women across the country to get an abortion. Uh, they're defending their woke policies, but not their mission. They, we are a distracted people, yeah. and as a result, our children have become the targets of the enemy. As Governor Lee from uh, Tennessee said last night, this is pure evil. Yes. We battle not against flesh and blood. We're battling against evil, and that's what we're up against. And I was just thinking, as, as these reports are coming in, we're reading more and more as a, as a former police officer, understanding what I just saw in that video, those guys that went through that, not knowing what they were going to see when they turned the corner, we see it because we see the reports. We see the after effects of this. And it's kind of like what Nehemiah got when he got a report from his brother that had just returned from Jerusalem. He said, I sat down and wept and I mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O oh, great and awesome God, you who keep covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe you and, and your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant that I pray before you now day and night. Yes. This is the moment for the church to be praying, to be planning for God to move, and to be participants in this move of God that I'm praying and believing will happen. Let's pray. Father, yes, Lord. Lord, we join our voices together across this nation, recognizing, Lord, we don't have enough money that can fix this problem. We don't have enough pieces of legislation. We don't have enough police officers to make us safe. We need God in America again, and let the mockers mock. Yes, Lord. Let those who want to ridicule, let them ridicule. Lord, we will not be silent. We know what your word says. Your word says for us to return to you, that your favor might be upon us again as we repent of our sins and we return to you. Lord, we repent. We repent for the years of abortion that have yes. taken place in this nation, that have made our children vulnerable in the wombs of their mothers. So why should we be surprised when they're vulnerable in the wombs of our schools? Yes. God, we have opened the door to this evil. Forgive us, and Lord, cleanse us, and return your favor to this nation again. I pray, Lord, you would stir the heart of every believer, that we would be like Nehemiah, that we could not sleep, we could not rest, because we're praying and we're interceding for this nation. May we not wait for someone else. Yes. But Lord, may we take that responsibility. May the pulpits of America proclaim truth. May they this Sunday, yes, Lord. may they proclaim, thus says the Lord, Amen. without hesitation, yes, Lord. without fear, yes, Lord. without timidity, but with boldness and courage, proclaiming your word in brokenness and in humility, but resting upon you and your truth. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bring men and women Lord, into government that will stand for yes. righteousness, men and women yes. who will stand for righteousness in our military. And I pray over them right now because they're yes. under assault. They're being driven out. They're having to hide their faith. Lord, may they be able to boldly proclaim their faith and may you protect them, yes, Lord. Lord, as they do. Lord, I pray that you would raise up a standard of righteousness and we would see this wave of evil yes. pushed back in our nation as we yes. turn to you. For we yes. pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Love you, man. Love you. Man, I got to tell you, um, you saw that backdrop behind that, uh, that window of his. And uh, I want you to know that uh, often I'm in Washington, D.C., and he is the one who I'm with. And... Uh, you, guys, you just need to know that uh, some of the hope that I gain is being in that room that Tony was in there and behind or in front of him is a, a conference table and um, Tony will be the first one in that room to take his cowboy boots off 
and uh, get flat on his face, facing the U.S. Capitol and pray his heart out. And let me tell you, he doesn't invite us, he just does it. And you find yourself in a matter of moments, humbled and on your face, uh, with them in prayer. You always think of Washington, D.C. as being a cesspool, and it is. It is the famous swamp. But there are God's people there. A handful, but they're in the gap. And Washington is intact, at least physically right now, because of brothers and sisters just like Michelle and just like Tony. And uh, I'm just so very grateful Okay, now we are going to try this. I love this young lady. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my wife and I love my... <laughs> but uh, you'll see why in a moment. Um, when I see somebody doing something that they ought not to be doing, like robbing a bank or something, <laughs> I think, where's Heidi St. John? Uh, if... If there's, a, if there's a, a situation where a country needs to be delivered from terrorism, I'm thinking they should just parachute Heidi St. John. Um, Heidi St. John is a modern day Deborah in our world today. I don't know how many zillions of followers she has, but there's a lot of people that she's influencing. And I'm honored. She'll text me and she'll just call me friend. Hi, friend. How are you? And I just love that. But I love her spirit to war in the realm of the spirit. And we've asked her tonight to comment and to pray on education from K to 12. And uh, we're going to try to go live right now. She's, I think she's coming from uh, Kentucky. She's there. There she is. Welcome, Heidi. God bless you. Hey, my you. friend. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is such an important topic, and I know that you care as much as I do about the state of education in this country, and uh, you're right to call it a war because it is a war, and education is the front lines of the war. Uh, the hostile takeover of this nation began in our universities and it has now trickled down into our high schools and into our grade schools and now even into our preschools. Our children are being targeted by the enemy of their soul right inside of our schools. And every day, hundreds of thousands of children are put onto school buses and their parents pack them a sack lunch and pat them on the head and send them to the front lines. Mm. And we need to pray desperately for what's happening to our children right now. I came tonight to declare a state of emergency when it comes to education in this country. Our children are being targeted by the enemy of their soul. They're being told that there is no God and that they're an accident of nature. Now they're being told that male and female no longer exists and if they want to be a boy or a girl, it's within their power to just believe it so and it will change the biological reality that God made them male and female. We know that this is a spiritual attack. It's an attack against creator God. In Genesis, the Bible says that God created us male and female in his image. And this should be the signal to every one of us that our children are being targeted by the enemy. Yes. This is a spiritual attack. The Bible says, Jesus said actually in Luke 640, that when a student is fully trained, he'll be like his teacher. Mm. And I don't know about you, Pastor Jack, but that, that sends shivers up and down my spine because that tells me that we have a generation of students right now who given just a few more years are gonna be tomorrow's teachers, tomorrow's judges, tomorrow's lawmakers. Uh, these are the people that are gonna be in charge of our country in just a few short years. And if they are being influenced, like I know that they are by the enemy, we need to bring this system of education absolutely in prayer before the Lord. Our children are being injured on the front lines of this war. And children are near to the heart of God. Amen. The Bible says it'd be better for us to have a millstone hung around our neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea than to lead even one of God's little ones astray. And so my heart breaks uh, for what's happening in our education system. And today, I just want to bring it before the Lord. My husband and I cry out every single day for what's happening to our children. And I am praying that the Holy Spirit moves in the hearts of every person Amen. that's listening to this tonight. And they begin to want to get off the bench and onto the battlefields, off of the sidelines of this cultural and spiritual war against our children and onto the front lines. And so that's what I'd like to pray for tonight. Father, we come before you tonight and we just, we ask your forgiveness. Father, forgive us for waiting this long. Yep. Forgive us, Father, for waiting this long. 
These are your children. Father, tonight I pray that you would unloose the tongues of the men and women who call on the name of Jesus. On your people, God, I pray that you would unloosen our tongues and that we would begin to show up in droves to school board meetings, that we would begin to look to see what is being taught to our children via the curriculum. God, I pray that you would strengthen the resolve of parents, that the moment they understand that their children's minds and hearts are being assaulted by the enemy of their soul, that they would be emboldened to take their children out of these broken education systems. And God, I pray for educational arcs to arise all over this nation yes. that your children can run to. Father, we do pray for the children in this country right now, for the young people who are being so damaged by gender ideology, Lord, comprehensive sex education, critical race theory. Father, our children are precious to you. Help them to be precious to us as they are precious yes. to you. Yes. And Father, we do pray that you would strengthen the resolve of every pastor. I agree. I come with Pastor Jack tonight and agree. Bring back the black, the black robe regiment again. Yes, that the men and women of God would arise and speak yes. to this evil in plain language and call it out for what it is. Yes. And God, we thank you that you are able, that you are in control. And Father, we do ask for forgiveness. We yes, cry Lord. out for revival, but Lord, we know that revival will not come to this nation apart from repentance. That's right. And so, Father, let it begin tonight. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray that you would be near to us, that we would listen to your voice, that in the quiet places of our hearts where no one else is listening, that our hearts would be surrendered to you. Father, yes. we cannot pass on to the next generation what we don't possess. Right. And so tonight I pray that our hearts would be moved to surrender to you, the things that no one else sees, the things that we're watching on our laptops in the evenings, the things that we allow ourselves to listen to, and that our hearts again would be solely and wholly devoted to you. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you are able, and we love you, Father, and I pray tonight that our hearts would begin again to reflect it, not just in words, but also in actions. Yes. Thank you for this time tonight, Father, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to intervene as only you can, and we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Heidi, we want to we want to thank you. You've got quite a quite a lift in front of you, and we want to pray for you right now, Lord. We pray for Heidi as she's going to be addressing thousands of women there in Kentucky, and God, that you would move by the power of your Holy Spirit through her and upon these women, that Lord, they would arise at the end of this conference and that they would come out of this conference, that the building would actually exude uh, women of God on fire for Jesus, that you'd baptize them afresh in your Holy Spirit. And Lord, all along the way, may Heidi sense your favor, may she sense your presence, and while she's teaching these women, Lord, may she know that in that moment, you're actually teaching her that she's going to sense your spirit taking possession and ministering by your power. May she be a witness to a great move of God. We thank you for her and her family. Keep her standing. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you, Heidi. Thank you, my friend. So, um, you know, we're doing this scriptedly here, and so I have no time now <laughs> before we go to the next uh, the next person, and uh, you gotta, uh, these, these people, some of these people have stayed up very late. I know Heidi had just landed uh, in Cincinnati to get down to, uh, to the Ark with Ken Ham, where she's addressing thousands of women uh, there at, at that event. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity, uh, in fact, it was Monday itself when the shooting took place. Um, immediately, uh, my phone uh, lit up, uh, and that's, that's not uncommon when things happen, but there was one, there was one uh, text that came to me, and uh, I can't say no to this guy, ever. Um, he is, a, he is, listen, he was, not, he was not only on American Idol and shook it up and did an amazing job, of course, I think he took third in the finals, but I, he took first actually on the TV that I was watching. <laughs> but I love him. I love his wife, his family. They're awesome for Jesus. And so uh, we've asked Danny Goki tonight to speak and to pray regarding entertainment. Danny, we love you, brother. What's going on? 
Hey, Jack, thanks for having me as a part of this tonight. I really appreciate it and I'm honored, so thank you. Thank you, brother. All right, so tonight I'm gonna to talk about how the enemy has influenced you know, the industry, entertainment industry specifically, and you know, where I'm involved in is the music industry. Um, and if people who have been around Christianity for a long time and read the scriptures, you understand that the devil has a natural ability with music. You know, he's a musical being and he's extensive experience having used it to worship God before his, before his fall. It's no wonder why we find musician after musician influenced supernaturally when it comes to music. And so, and it talks about how beautiful Satan was, or Lucifer was his name. And so, you know, there's a few quotes. So for specifically in music, I can see how people's reactions are when I'm speaking words of hope and words mm. of faith. But, um, you know, Jimi Hendrix said it like this. He said, I can, I can explain everything better through music. And he said it like this. He said, you hypnotize people. Wow. And when you get them at their weakest point, you can preach into the subconscious what we want to say. Wow. That's why the name Electric Church flashes in and out. So that's what Jimi, Jimi Hendrix said. Insane Clown Posse said, we control your kids through our music. And so there's a lot of studies that talks about the subconscious, right? When you're listening to, a, if you study like, neurology and how neural pathways are created if something's repeated over and over mm -hmm. in a cycle of minimum 21 days or th at the maximum three cycles of 21 days whatever is being in that conscious mind after that time period goes down to your subconscious and what does it do it affects your perception and it affects your worldview um i read i, I found this article and i actually thought it was pretty interesting and it's from the journal of personality and social psychology and it reports that music, and I'm, you know, and I'll, I'll lump entertainment into this as a whole, can yeah. incite aggressive thoughts and feelings. During five experiments with 75 female and 70 male college students, those who heard a violent song were shown to feel more hostile than those who heard a nonviolent song mm -hmm. from the same artisan style. The studies showed that violent songs led to more aggressive thoughts. And so the study goes on more and more but you think about it that's after hearing one song mm -hmm. now imagine there are cultures that are fully shaped and people listen to this music non-stop it truly is affecting their perception and it's affecting their outlook on life and of course the enemy with his natural ability is using music yeah. to influence people and influence culture and how many movements i mean, think about the 70s alone how many movements were started through music you know i think of of you know Motown and I think of even the Jesus Revolution movie that's out right now you see how um, a lot of them sparked Keith Green you know I remember listening to him growing up he sparked a movement so as we can see you know music and entertainment are affecting people and you know a lot of people like to play it down mm -hmm. but this is not something to play with and, and here's why because what are words when words are buried in beats words are actually uh, seeds that contain images. Yep. And when you're talking about sex all the time, you're talking about violence all the time, you're actually planting those seeds and those images in the people who are listening. So that's, that's the basics of, of music is your actually words are seeds and they carry images, right? Yeah. And so this is why we, we, we must be very careful with what our children listen to. We must be very careful with what we listen to ourselves. And so uh, those are some statistics that, okay, if I pray over the music industry and over the entertainment industry, as it's obviously it is for many people blinding their eyes and, and dulling their hearts. Yeah, amen. So Father, we just thank you. Thank you that your word sets people free, God. And we thank you, God, that... That God, you're, for lack of a better word, you're the greatest entertainer and greatest musician of all time. You, you have the greatest ideas. You have the greatest messages. And God, you, you wrap the greatest feelings in this music, but it's all stored in your word. So Father, we just right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would send laborers into the field of entertainment, yes. into the field of music. Your word says the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few, that people would go out into these industries, Father, that we would be bold, that we would take risk, Father God, but that we put you at the center of it all. And God, we come against 
God, we pull down the principalities in the name of Jesus that are trying to control the music industry, Father. We pull those down, Father. Would you give us your strategy? Would you give us your mind and what your vision for music and entertainment is? And would you place it in our hearts so that we can use entertainment and music as a form of reconciliation in ministry and we can become ministers of reconciliation. God, we're saying we are ready. Here we are. We empty ourselves and we ask us that you fill us with your glory so that your glory can be seen through in us in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Danny, uh, we, would just want, we just want you to know that we love you and in our home and our, with our granddaughter, uh, the Goki music is going all the time. <laughs> And uh, we just thank the world of you. And, and I just want to say across the nation, everybody needs to uh, just go to whatever iTunes or whatever right now and buy everything Danny Goki does. Uh, he loves God. He's the real deal. And he's concerned about the message. Danny, thank you, brother. Thank you, Jack. I really appreciate your friendship with me. We'll see you guys later. God bless you. <laughs> Sweetest guy. Think of the pulpit that Satan utilizes in the entertainment world. And so these are, of course, this is a, a night of uh, exhortation and prayer, but you know, you can't cover all of these things to the depth that God would have us to pray, but it's my prayer that tonight would be um, priming the pump, we would say. You know, if a pump doesn't work, you pour water, a cup of water down it, and uh, it gets it going. And tonight, I pray that we will never be the same uh, after this evening. One of those areas of profound, whew, profound influence that we all took for granted for so long until recent years, both for good and for bad, is the area of business, commerce. There are most companies that were devastated by the COVID event. You know businesses that never reopened. And some people lost their family dynasty, as it were, in restaurants or stores that their great-grandpa had made. And then others who seemed to be faceless, invisible, certainly political titans like Amazon and others saw record, num record profits because you and I bought everything and had it brought to our home while the stores in our neighborhood began to shrivel up. And I communicated at that time to some of our civic leaders. I said, I'm going to tell you up front now, if you want to arrest me, you have, send your guys to arrest me, but here's the deal. We've got people in our church and we've got people who don't even go to our church whose businesses we appreciate and they're going under. And I'm asking the church to go spend their money at those places. I'm asking them to open up their businesses so they can feed their families. And uh, this particular atmosphere of government that we enjoy in this region and in this county said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna act like I never heard you say that. <laughs> and some businesses uh, were saved and kept going and why because that's how you feed your family that's how you take care that's how you keep a roof over your family's head but in our nation greed greed has taken over and so um, a man who came to America as a young man with nothing from Lebanon worked hard for others learned a trade, applied himself, and wound up, him and his wife together wound up building one of, if not the biggest, uh, corporate industrial supply chain company in America to keep places like SoFi Stadium, Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium, theaters, Regal, uh, Cinemark, uh, Edwards, you name it. If you've gone to a bathroom in a public place, it's, it's the products that you've been using by a man who came to America with nothing. 
But that's not exactly true. He came to America because he was born and raised in a Christian home in Lebanon that loved Jesus Christ. And I want you to, uh, to hear some, some wisdom from, uh, from George Abiyad, uh, president of Royal Corporation. Uh, George, are you there? Do we have you? Thank you, Pastor Jack. Uh, this evening, uh, I'll be addressing the topic of uh, business in America. And as usual, business uh, is a reflection of society. Uh, and without any doubt, uh, there is an element of fear that has seeped into the culture, uh, accompanied by uncertainty. Uh, and that combination uh, within the business atmosphere uh, creates an additional component uh, that has spilled over into supply chain, labor issues, uh, lack of craftsmanship, uh, that uh, is, is really uh, reciprocating uh, the impact on society again. Uh, but the reality is that it has, doesn't have to be that way. Uh, there are, uh, without any doubt, uh, components uh, that for few hundred years uh, were at the heart and foundation uh, of how businesses operated. Businesses were extension really of uh, families. I mean, the original business came from uh, the family nucleus and extended family. Mm. And uh, these uh, components and, and principles in the Bible uh, are, are very basic. Uh, the most the dominant one uh, that we feel uh, has major impact in every direction, whether at the top management or for the employee or for the customer, is found uh, in none other than Matthew 7:12. Uh, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. And Technically, it does sum up the law and the prophets because it covers every component due to the qualifier uh, supposition in the first sentence. So in everything, not in some things, but in <laughs> everything. And this is the proactive uh, golden rule that allows a person to have the ultimate empathy, which is the best component of marketing. At the same time, it's the best relational dynamic between employee, employer, uh, company, and customer at every level. No, no one can even complain uh, from the notion that they are being treated the best manner that the other person would have want them to treat them. And that uh, res positive reciprocity uh, uh, has, has been lost the last few years, and we need to recapture it and reconfigure it uh, all over again. Uh, there might be a question, uh, what if we put that effort and it's not reciprocated? And the second principle comes from Colossians 3.23, which, uh, which says, whatever you do, again, this is an absolute uh, presupposition, because it's whatever you do, not some things you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And this is the vertical covenant that uh, we have uh, with God. And it really gives a sub subsidizing element to what, whatever we deal uh, with co-workers and with everybody else. Because eventually, if we put all our heart into things, we are getting not only rewarded from above, but we will find reciprocity from others when we have that attitude. Mm. Of course, businesses and any organization uh, require uh, order and a sense of justice uh, at, at every level. Uh, and uh, this comes with a guarantee from uh, the epistle to James that says, if anyone then knows the good uh, they ought to do it and does not do it, it's a sin for them. And uh, this really challenges us to not only know what is good, but also act it as an obligation. 
And the final one, we remain in James, says, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful, mercy triumphs over justice. Amen. And this is one of the very few things in the Bible that has a quid pro quo. There is a sequence for it, if then statement, in which we show mercy, we do receive mercy from God. I've been certainly the beneficiary of that many times in my life. And that's a component that allows us to treat each other with the mercy that comes from above and a reflection uh, of godly love, ensuring that we pay attention to the people who are challenging, uh, a ch a challenged and uh, that are deprived or have special circumstances. Uh, all these things seem like a tall order. Uh, although uh, we might have a challenge personally in executing them due to our fallibility and being finite, uh, but the reality of it is uh, we can come to the Lord and ask uh, His help in that. And my prayer uh, is really joining uh, a very important passage in Psalms uh, that is a prayer by King David. Uh, and please join me in our prayer for business and society. Uh, Psalms 510. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me yes. the joy of your salvation. Yes, Lord. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, uh, he probably can't hear me now, so the thing has been switched off. Uh, but he came here with nothing, and God has blessed him so much that uh, they, they reached the world, him and his wife, with making other people's lives better by hearing the gospel first and by receiving medical treatment or education. And um, George Abiyad is a, is a precious man. Amen. So we're gonna try this. Um, he's gonna be coming to us from uh, just a nation that is in peril tonight. Today, now, actually, there. Uh, he's a major in the Israeli Defense Force. You know who I'm talking about. He's been a friend of mine for over 25 years now. And so, um, Amir, is this working? Yeah. Although I'm in Israel, my heart goes <laughs> out to the victims of the terrible murder that took place in Nashville, Tennessee. What we can see is the rise of a demonic power that yeah. wants to kill innocent lives in the name of you must accept us, you must tolerate us, mm. and don't ever kill us. It seems like that demon is basically deceiving so many to think that they are the victims, that they are the hunted ones, that they are the persecuted ones. And in the name of that victimhood, they're picking up guns and killing people. By the way, anarchy, and violence is the share or is the, I guess, portion of Israel even today. Allow me to take you back to the time that America was the first country that recognized the state of Israel as the Jewish state. President Truman actually was the first to recognize Israel. At first he didn't know what the name of the country is going to be, so he just wrote, I hereby recognize the Jewish state or the state of the Jews. He wasn't wrong. Yes, the official name is Israel, but this is the state of the Jews. This is the homeland of the Jewish people. This is the only place on planet Earth to where Jews can flee and even find citizenship automatically. This is the only place on planet Earth that God gave to the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that specific promise of God through Abraham for a land, a seed, and a blessing was and still is valid. Ladies and gentlemen, what President Truman did in 1948 
was kept through so many presidents throughout history in America, especially between uh, 2016 and 2020, when the 45th president of America moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and declared Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel. We're now coming to the point where we have a different administration with different agenda, agenda of the same administration of the 44th, agenda of globalism, agenda of cancel nationalism, agenda of there are no biblical privileges or biblical rights of anyone over anything. And what we see, even in the response of President Biden last night to what was going on in Israel, we see that he's actually scolding and rebuking the prime minister of the best ally of America in the Middle East and maybe in the world. He actually even said that he's not planning on inviting Netanyahu to the White House in the near future. These words are not even said to the country that actually just attacked U.S. bases and killed a U.S. contractor and wounded U.S. soldiers in eastern Syria. And I'm talking about Iran. We see an administration that is more favorable towards Iran and very hostile towards Israel. And don't be very surprised. This is the spirit of right. the progressive liberal movement that wants to cancel nationalism and wants to uh, push the whole world towards globalism. And what is the best thing or the best way to do it, if not to actually instigate or at least encourage anarchy, murder, and uh, I guess the killing of the innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen anything like that in the history of Israel where you know, normal Israeli citizens are being brainwashed to think that this is the end of the world for us, that this is the end of democracy, this is, we are on the verge of dictatorship. Talking about dictatorship and yet being able to not allow the government to do almost anything. That's not dictatorship, but that's deception. I want you to know that uh, in, in light of everything that is going on, both in Israel and in America, we need to remember one thing. Jesus was, is, and will always be the only hope. Amen. The hope of Israel, <laughs> as Paul said to the leaders of the Jews in the last chapter of the book of Acts. And of course, the hope of America, the country that sent more missionaries to the world than any other country today. And so what I want to do right now is to pray that the Lord will continue to keep us in line, focus on what is the most important thing for us to do today. Yes. Father, I thank you so much for the friendship that Israel has had with millions of Americans throughout uh, the last 75 years. I thank you for friendship and for bonds and for cooperation between the two countries but I also thank you for the love of so many Christians in America, for the state of Israel, for the people of Israel, and for the values of Israel. Father, I know that uh, in your word you promised that there are tough times coming, that people will have strong delusion, that we are about to see such a trouble that will befall Jacob, that he will be dumbfounded. And it will be so bad that religion will actually be found as a thing without any value anymore. It's faith that will then be searched by the people. Father, I thank you that in your word you kept telling us that endurance, patience, perseverance are qualities that we need to have in these last days. No wonder why. We tend to be impatient, we tend to be very easily breakable, and we tend to want to quit very easily and very fast in light of so much opposition and so much difficulties. Father, I pray that only through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will allow us to grow stronger and brighter in this dark world. I pray that now in Nashville, in Tennessee, and all across America, Christians will not rise yes. to fight in yes. the worldly manner, yes. but to be even a greater light yes, Lord. and to show love and to let people find life and not death. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you 
that your word is true. Yes. I thank you that it's only in you, Jesus, that we can find word of life. Where else can we go? We can't go to politicians. We cannot go to military institutions. We cannot go to the uh, things of this world to find any hope or any help. Where else, where, to whom shall we go yes, but to you, Jesus? So, Father, I pray now for America in this difficult time. I also pray for Israel in this difficult time. Yes, Lord. I pray that more than ever before, we will show love, we will show kindness, that we will not show fear, but we will also ex examine sound mind. Yes, Lord. And all of that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. I thank you, I bless you, and I pray all of that in the matchless name of the Holy One of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank God you. Bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, the next uh, contributor can't contribute. <laughs> uh, there's no signal where he's at. Um, and that's because of the devastation in Mississippi. Uh, Franklin Graham was going to join us tonight and to lead us, but he is on the ground. Samaritan's Purse is doing everything that they can. I thank God for them. Uh, they're the real deal. They're this, this. And so um, I'm filling in this gap until we have the, the next speaker lined up and the team will cue me up when that happens. But I wanna to speak to you tonight about the deception of media and the age in which we're living in that if you have any doubts whatsoever regarding how demonically energized this age is, you can actually test it. If you have any doubt, you can put it to the test and find out if what I'm telling you is true or false, and that is speak truth. Just speaking truth now will generate tremendous activity of pushback. Just speak truth to your friend who's doing something that is not appropriate or damaging or hurtful to them or their family, and you'll be hated. Just, just speak truth to a situation or agenda, a policy, or a worldview that is murderous, or in some way, shape, or form violates the word of God, and you'll be hated. And listen, it is that spirit of intimidation that Satan so well uses against us to shut us up. And if he can get you to be quiet in this world and not speak truth where there's a lie in motion, he wins. Now, somebody might say, somebody who's steeped in apathy might say, oh, I've read the Bible. Uh, that's just a battle. I've read the Bible. Jesus wins in the end. That's right. Jesus does win in the end. But will you be part of the victory? He has engaged us to be salt and light to the culture. Now, since Monday, I have been on numerous programs, and they continue again tomorrow and then Friday again. And the question is coming up, with all that's gone on uh, of late, where there has been LBGTQ transition violence, and what I mean by that is the violence that has been perpetrated by LBGTQ trans perpetrators. You may not be aware of that. The Colorado Springs violence was by a person that identified as non-binary. The two other events, it escapes me right now, I'm sorry, I forgot. The two other ones, I posted it earlier today on my social media. Uh, those violent acts were done by people who identified as trans. Now, I'm, listen to this. This week, 
in Nashville, uh, Audrey Hale was a woman, a young woman, who began receiving massive dosages of testosterone for homor- homor- hormone replacement to transition to being a male. And anyone in here who has had basic science, and there are those here who are scientists, and when I say scientists, for example, a medical doctor is a scientist. A chemist, a biologist in here tonight are watching across the nation tonight. They're scientists. That means they deal in the realm of facts. You cannot delve into the world of make-believe and get a degree in science. You can get a degree in philosophy or theory, but not science. I don't want anybody operating on me that got a medical certificate on medical theory. (laughs) I want somebody who sticks to the facts. And you can't have facts unless you have absolutes, and you can't have science unless there's absolutes. And so I was informed today that when a person goes through, listen, young people tonight, this could save your life. If any female is receiving testosterone injections and treatment, your body was never, your chemistry was never designed to receive that. You have a little bit by by nature. God put a little bit in you, just a little bit. But overdosing is a drug. Men listening to me right now, when our levels of testosterone are out of balance or too much, we are irritable, violent. Uh, We have to vent. And uh, as a Christian, when that's going on, we work out, I mean, I don't work out hard. I did some push-ups yesterday. Uh, but that I was forced to do. I was at the Babylon Bee and they made me do (laughs) push-ups. But but you go out and you surf or you work, you cut wood. A man has got to do that because we've got to get that out of our system. It is a biological reality. And what happened and what you saw on the body cam of those police officers which God bless them, two and a half minute response time to take out the assailant that would have just kept killing people. And we now find out that that was the first stop planned of the day of that murder to go to other schools and to take out other children. What happened? That person through transitioning lost their mind because they were doped up on testosterone, which has an effect to make you angry. And it's tough enough for a man to handle it. That's why boys tear into each other from the youngest of ages. Male and females are different. Designed by God to be different. But the media will not allow that. The media will not allow it. And I'm going to say this, you've heard it tonight, I think by every one of our speakers, is this, is that this is now a global issue. This is not a a community issue. This is a global issue. Media is lying to us, twisting things, and now we see uh, the program, for example, the Young Turks uh, saying, everyone, listen, Everyone needs to turn in their guns except LBGTQ and trans individuals. You need to get a gun and protect yourself against, against conservatives, white people, and Christians. Do you know what that, when you tell somebody who's amped up on a chemical that's in their body that ought not to be in there, that's a green light. But see, they can say that because they're the media. And nobody will dare mention it. But I want you to know that we're being lied to. The media is the pulpit of Satan manipulating individuals who either know it or do not know it. It's Satan's church. It's Satan's media. They're watching right now tonight. They'll publish something later this week. 
media today has taken the constitutional right that was given to them by believers in the First Amendment and they've prostituted it and pimped it to perpetrate evil on a global scale. It's happening at this hour in Israel, it's happening in America, in countries all around the world, and we're being lied to. And you, you will be deceived unless you know the truth. You will be deceived unless you know the truth. So let's pray right now. Father, I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would come against the, the media industrial complex of lies. It is no doubt the business that Satan has chosen to stake his claim and to invest the most in. Messaging, messaging, messaging. Advertising, advertising, evil. To the point where people, good people, some people maybe even in this audience or some people maybe watching now online have been beaten down by fear tactics of the enemy and they will not dare say a word because of intimidation and that is satanic. We are not to be intimidated. Perfect love cast out all fear. We know that we have the love of God and we know this. What the media can never do is to deliver to these poor people who have either A, been lied to or have an agenda of their own to groom that God, you can rescue them by the gospel of Christ getting out. The media cannot offer that. Only Jesus is the answer. Jesus will set a mind straight. Jesus will heal. And God, I pray right now that you would intervene in the city councils and school boards and legislation branches of our government in every state, starting in California and ending in Maine. Well, actually, let's include Hawaii too. Let's go as west as we can and as east as we can. That God, that you would send great conviction to Christians to stand lovingly strong and to tell those of the progressive, globalist, LBGTQ, community, trans, whatever it might be, that Jesus Christ wants their soul in heaven, that he died on the cross for all of our sins, and that if we would bow our knee and confess our sins to him for the reason that he died on the cross and rose again from the grave, we can have our minds healed, we can have our souls made alive, and we can become a people that we thought we would change, that we would have to have a doctor change. That's not change. That is the final manifestation of profound deception. We are on the brink of absolute destruction as a nation. And almighty God, we pray that you would open up the eyes of the blind. And Lord, that you'd start first in the church of Jesus in this nation. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. So we're gonna end tonight with, um, I don't know how to introduce this guy. I, he's got the wisdom, of, if I had a grandfather, he's got the wisdom of, of a grandfather that I would say, wow, but he's, he's young enough to, to be my son. That's if Lisa and I uh, got frisky a little later in life even, he's, he's so young. But God is using him mightily and he's shaping the culture for good and he's my dear brother and I'll, I, I, he's, like I said about Tony, I'd lay my life down for this young man and I'm glad that God has these people in my life. And... Um, we're going to ask, look at that, look at that face. He's married now. He's got a family and God has blessed him tremendously. Charlie, you already know what I think about your brother. Can you, uh, can you speak to us regarding college and university issue? Yeah, absolutely. And Jack, you're a dear brother. I'm honored to call you a friend and thank you for being a mentor to me and a spiritual leader. Um, I just want to say that for everybody in the congregation watching online, 
Jack has touched my life greatly, and uh, he's such a thank great you, leader, sir. and our nation is blessed by him. So, thank you, sir. Thank you Jack. Thank and you, so, sir. look, the college and universities, uh, it really is the feeder ground of so many of these bad ideas. Um, many of you might have, maybe you saw my mostly peaceful visit to University of California <laughs> Davis recently. Um, and the issue with that was not just the violence, not just all of the um, you know, nonsense surrounding that, the police officer being assaulted or them trying to use weapons to gain entry into our event. No, the issue was that it was all based on a lie and therefore it was satanic because uh, Satan is the author of lies. He is the chief deceiver. Mm -hmm. um, and it was based on a lie, misrepresenting something I never said, something I don't believe about the trans LGBTQ world. And unfortunately, the leaders of that university at University of California Davis then used that lie to try to foment and incite a mob. But I'm here to tell you tonight that, you know, we could talk about all the negatives. There is something profound happening, and I believe it is a move of God. We just completed our tour at Turning Point USA. These are at secular campuses, okay? Uh, UC Davis, University of California, Santa Barbara, The Ohio State University, LSU, Rutgers, University of Illinois, Chicago. The only, every single school except UC Davis, we almost had it happen there. The reason was obvious uh, because of Antifa. At every school, we could not fit all the students who wanted to come to our events. We couldn't find a room big enough. It was an absolutely extraordinary thing. And we had, thank you, and um, well over 1,300 seats, 1,800 seats, we couldn't fit all the students there. At every single one of these events, I'm sharing the gospel challenging the ideas of Marxism and secularism yes. and secular humanism. And so there's something profound happening. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what God has in store in the immediate. We know God's final plan. We know that God is in charge and that God is sovereign and we must be obedient. But I can tell you on the front lines, I, I'm filled with hope. I'm filled with joy and optimism for this moment, even though um, I'm visiting some of the darkest places in the country. Uh, I'm seeing something very powerful happen. And so, uh, Jack, I know you asked me to say a short prayer. I, um, I'm not a professional prayer, but I'm, I'm happy to try my best. But I do want to just say a word of encouragement for everybody that the work that you are doing, the acts of worship that you are doing, uh, they're making a difference. They have ripple effects across the country. People are pulling me aside and they say, boy, I just wish we had a church like Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. And it's really special. All of you are part of that. You're playing a big role in inspiring and encouraging the entire nation. Um, and God is at work. And I'm just so blessed um, to call all of you friends um, and to be partners with all of you. But do not be, do not be um, dismayed. Do not be filled with a spirit of negativity. There's plenty that we could be down about. Jack is right in his prayer. We are on the verge of losing this country. Um, but thankfully, the founding fathers made it really hard to destroy America for four years. Boy, they're trying their best. But the founders made it tough. And we're going to have a chance to reclaim this nation for truth and righteousness. Awesome. Charlie, Charlie, where are you tonight? You know, I'm actually speaking at a church in San Diego, um, Awakened oh. Church. I just spoke. Oh, yes, you're I'm again. Great. I, 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 yeah, he's fabulous. And we talked about you, Jack. We talked about your church. We talked about how it's, it's rare, but, the, you know, the few and the mighty. Uh, and we packed it up. We couldn't fit everyone that wanted to come in tonight, overflow room. And we talked about a lot of different things. Um, I got my time zone slightly messed up because I forgot the time change and all that. <laughs> so apologies on the time issue. No. Um, but be encouraged, everybody. This is a time of action. This is a Kairos moment all yes. throughout the book of Mark. We see that uh, word Kairos, which really means inflection point, time for decision, time for action. Not a time for passivity or to sit aside or kind of just, oh boy, you know, I'm going to sit on the sidelines. Get in the arena. Stay in the arena. Um, and, and the Lord is in charge. Awesome. As an act in obedience to the Lord, we must continue to act. Wonderful. God bless you, Charlie. Thank you, brother. Take care. Thank you. See ya. So let's pray together right now regarding this issue. Father, we ask you, Lord, that our college and university campuses... Lord, it is true what Charlie said a moment ago. He just now reminded me of a time at Harvard University and at Princeton when the students revolted at those seminaries at Harvard and Princeton.
Christian universities at that time, and they began to burn Bibles. And they began to drink. And my goodness, we're talking late 1660s, 1670s. Father, we pray that you, you would supernaturally, because I think it's beyond human ability, that you'd, humans, that, that you'd supernaturally circumnavigate the plots and plans of the globalist agenda to pay for everything for our schools. Lord, we know that our schools have been infiltrated and taken uh, by foreign money when it comes to building uh, Islamic cultural centers at Georgetown and at other universities. And the Bible goes out and the Quran comes in. And money seems to be the God. Well, Lord, I'm asking you in Jesus' name that if it be thy will, that you would dry up the money of the colleges and universities, that you would either cause them to be put out of business completely, or that uh, their boards would recognize what's happening, fall on their faces, and seek you. Because God, it's a dangerous place to send one of our kids to a college or university campus now. And um, the words of Heidi are haunting me tonight. These, these people that we see not even realizing that as they curse America, having been born and raised in it, they've got a silver spoon in one hand, a gold spoon in the other. They're on an iPhone or an iPad in some dorm somewhere with a campus pay card to swipe as long as mom and dad keep filling up the bank account and they don't have one bit sense of reality. And they have no idea that Washington prayed for three hours at Valley Forge in the dead of winter and a miraculous event took place when you intervened that's in the record books, that's in the history books. They have no idea that our founding fathers refused to get off the Mayflower without drawing up a legal document of governance. They have no idea that George Whitfield would preach from Boston to the Carolinas, to 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 people in one crowd at one time without a microphone. And people were transformed. And New York City, the police officers had nothing to do anymore, no more crime. And they formed the quartet and they stood on the corners and they sang hymns when your spirit fell upon New York and Manhattan. Even going back when Washington prayed and a great fog settled in upon Jamaica Bay and we were able to escape 8,000 British forces in a moment of certain doom, you spared this nation for a reason. You may be done with this nation. I understand that. There's only one nation in the Bible that's going to move on into eternity, and we understand that's Israel. You've made that very clear. But then, Lord, the upside is there's no reference of America in the Bible. It's, it's, it's as though we came out of the spirit realm and will fall away into the spirit realm. But in the meantime, it seems as though because of our heritage, we can call out to you and you show up in the darkest hour. And we're asking you to move, God, in our country. We're asking you to come down once again and visit our nation, Lord, not with uh, anything other than true repentance. 
God, we're asking you to give us repentance. You, you call us to repentance, but unless you open up our eyes that we might see the light of our sins, we will not cry out to you. And our nation is not crying out to you now. We don't see it. At least we don't see enough of it. How many people will have to die for us to wake up? How many people will have to experience ravaging storms? Almighty God, King of heaven and earth, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would do what this nation has done so often. And I think of our first constitutional Congress that got together. And Lord, they went to that passage and they said, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they prayed that for our nation. No country in the world has had the guts to say that, but Israel and America. God, we pray right now that you would stop this movement. Cause now, Lord God, the violence that has been posted, uh, the threats that have been posted. by those who are radical progressives and anarchists to take up arms. The photos are on the internet. We've got them and their statements to go and attack until everybody sees the story their way. Now that's a person caught by Satan himself. We pray that you'd liberate them and set them free with the love of God. And Father, we pray that you would send your angels of protection. And Lord, I, we thank you that Monday's news wasn't as bad as it could have been, as, as terrible as it was. Where in the assailant's planning, crossed out a church because she had written down that there was just too much security at that church. Well, we pray tonight, Lord God, for the security detail that we've had here at this church for so many years. God, we pray. I know people may not, may, in this day and age, people don't want to see when they pull up to a church. They don't want to see guys uh, and, and gals armed as they are and then the layers of protection that are in every service here. There's visible protection, and then there's invisible protection that's here. There's known security, and there's plainclothes security. There's cameras, and there's technologies in effect. All that stuff. We pray, first of all, that you would protect all of our men and women who work here 24-7 to keep us free to worship safely. God, may no harm befall them whatsoever. Lord, we ask you to bless every one of our precious or their precious uh, detection dogs. Everybody loves them. They're the sweetest dogs around. Everybody wants to get their picture with these precious dogs. But God, keep their nose keen. <laughs> and those, the, the prep, bless them. And uh, we know that you've blessed dogs specially anyway. So bless these incredible dogs dogs that are on campus all the time doing work. God, we pray that you would take this church, sanctify it to your will, to your purpose. And God, even today on a little spy mission like Nehemiah, as you sent us out to survey some property down the street for a school, if that's your will, tomorrow in our meetings, we pray that you would touch the seller we pray that you touch the city and the county. I mean, I think it's easier to get all the planets of the universe together in alignment than to get county and city, seller and buyer to come to an agreement. But God, you can do anything. And frankly, we don't want to do nothing unless you're in it. But if you're in it, you've spoiled us, God, over these last three decades. When you do it, you do it. And God, we pray that you would 
Show us that if you want us to have a school that rocks the world of ignorance and produces kids that know math, know history, they know geography, they know culture, they know civics, they're safe, they can learn languages, and God, that they can go out from this place and change the world. God, give us, give me the discipline. I know my theology. I know that you could come back tonight. But at the same time, I, we must plan for the next 100 years. So cause us to conduct ourselves wisely. And I pray tonight for every one of those who have joined us online. I pray for those that will view this call to prayer later on in the week. And I pray for every one of those who are here on campus. God, we want to say to you that it's been a long time since there's been a revival in America. And if you're going to start a revival somewhere, we're asking you to start it right here. We are jealous for your presence. We are jealous for your hand. We are jealous for your heart. If you're going to move, oh God, don't pass us up. God, pour out your Holy Spirit, sweep across California, sweep across the 50 states. God, may your spirit move up into Canada and down into Mexico. God, we pray for a profound work and Lord, bring us leaders who you have their heart in your hand. If they believe in you or not is irrelevant. But bring us leaders who you direct their hearts and minds. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.